Yo, welcome Frony. So today we are reacting again on another Tico Talks. The last one was really interesting. They shared lots of their plans and being transparent. So we're going to go and give it a try again. Let's start with castle sieges. After watching multiple point of views from each region sieges and reviewing feedback across Discord, Reddit and other platforms, one thing stands out. This is already really nice. They are actually watching POVs on YouTube from people to gather feedback as well. Amazing. They're doing their due diligence. Huh? Most devs just look at their numbers. Oh, I have some numbers. Well done. Well done. This event truly sets Throne and Liberty apart. The scale of player participation creates unique battle scenarios unlike any other MMO. Our biggest siege had over 3,900 participants on the Stormbringer server. We saw nearly 45% of castles change ownership and over 40,000 players received some amount of Lucent payout. I watched so many awesome clips from our players making some incredible plays. It was so... 3,900 participated at that siege. Crazy, huh? Crazy. I think on our server, Lightbringer, it was 1,650. Fun to watch. While it will take some time to review each server's unique battle, we have noticed and heard from many of you about areas in which we need to improve. Our approach to sieges is as follows. First, our goal is to make sure everything functions properly from a technical standpoint. Events of this magnitude are incredibly challenging to pull off, and we've put a lot of focus in to ensure they are technically sound. Second is to evaluate the overall challenge and fun factor. And third is to evolve sieges over time to ensure they meet the needs of our players and continue to feel fresh. With this, there are some items I want to address directly right now. Shortly before the siege, we learned of a tactic that attackers could use to access the inner courtyards earlier than intended through the western side rooftops. Unfortunately, we learned about it too late to address it in an optimal way prior to the siege. Due to cross-platform publishing deadlines, both fixing the issue or delaying the siege would have required releasing an untested build, risking problems for all players. I think that decision that they made here was pretty good. They saw it, they acknowledged it, they did not want it to hide it. They published it on Twitter. So at least it's equal grounds for everyone and not some guilds have an advantage because they have the knowledge and others don't have it. So I think from the situation that they have, they've done the best out of it. Even though, of course, we would have preferred if it wouldn't have been there in the first place. We debated this heavily internally and ultimately we decided that raising awareness to give defending teams time to strategize their defenses was the best choice of two less than ideal options. I'm deeply sorry for anyone impacted by this decision. We're committed to resolving any unintended advantages as quickly as possible whenever they may surface. This particular issue will be resolved prior to the next castle siege on December 1st. We also identified two issues that impacted some servers where pillage zones couldn't be captured by guilds and the lucent distributions from those captured pillage zones were not being properly distributed. Both of these items will be resolved before the next it's good that we were lucky we didn't have that at all in our server. Each. For anyone impacted by the distribution issue, we will identify and provide appropriate restitution. We are reviewing all claims on a case-by-case -case basis and will follow up with those impacted. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Another hot topic from the siege is that of PvP immunity following resurrection and teleportation. It's clear that the current 30 second timer is excessive for certain siege scenarios. To change it will require development as this timer is linked to many other parts of the game where 30 seconds is appropriate. We're going to invest that effort and we're gonna fix it as quickly as possible. But unfortunately, that won't arrive in time for the next few castle sieges, so stay tuned. There is more info coming up later in this video on Mega Alliance. No, let's not go into deep of the timer, okay? We can all agree that the timer was real. He said something interesting that the timer is linked to everything. So they have programmed the timer, right? And didn't do it individually for every um, PvP aspect. They just have it as once and they use it everywhere. And now they probably need to re-engineer it so they can do it differently for different cases, no? So keep watching to hear more about that topic. Of course, this isn't a comprehensive list of all the siege improvements that we're looking into, so please keep giving us your feedback. We're committed to actioning it. While we're on the topic of PvP, I want to spend some time to talk to everyone in our great PvP community who is watching. 
As a longtime enjoyer of PvP myself, I want you to know that PvP will remain an important aspect of Throne and Liberty. Our game's unique ability to bring scale into PvP is both one of the most exciting and challenging parts of the game to manage. With design at scale, small changes can sometimes have a larger than intended impact. So we have to be very careful on how and when we implement changes. Here are some of the key areas we're focused on to help improve the experience for PvP. Let's start with crowd control. Simply put, we think crowd control is having a larger than intended impact on battle without sufficient methods to prevent it. Really? Crowd control having a larger impact in the battle than intended? If you're playing it correctly, you can tornado people forever. You're never going to move. We're going to do two things. First, we're going to significantly increase the rate at which your CC immunity gauge builds up, especially when you have multiple CCs impacting you at a given time. Honestly, I cannot take that for full. They have said that three or four times now, and they have never done it. Or they have done it and it was so badly designed based on the CC that can actually pop you that it had no effect. We hope this will reduce those times where it feels you can't control your character for extended periods of time. And this change will come in December. Second, we're working on bringing a change to the Purification Stone that will give players an additional enhancement to choose from when activating the stone. This change will also come in December. I think at the moment, the CC that is the most annoying because it has no counterplay to it is the Prone, for example. No? If you could also CC the Prone effect with the Purification Stone, it would be Gucci. Next, I want to talk about Mega Alliances. This is a challenging problem to solve that doesn't have a silver bullet solution. Oftentimes, eliminating certain elements of the game that help Mega Alliances thrive would also hurt guilds who use those features for intended gameplay. For now though, we will be removing hostile guild relationships fully from the game. This change will come in December. Mega Alliances also require looking at the human element though. While incentives are causing these alliances to form, balancing them is tricky. Swing the pendulum too far the other way, and it could harm all of our guilds. For conflict mode bosses in particular, we are working on this issue to adjust how rewards are managed. We don't have an exact timeline for this change just yet, but we'll let you know once we have firmer dates. When we make this change, our goal is to create a fair balance across all participants, while still ensuring the strongest performers see the appropriate benefit for their success. So stay tuned as we finalize those details and share them with you later. My wish would be that alliances are only allowed to exist for castle siege and everything else of the game is guild versus guild. A key place we want to improve is the general availability of PvP for our players more broadly. With the current scale of players required for the majority of PvP in the game, there are some barriers to PvP accessibility right now. That's why on December 5th, we are bringing our new feature, War Games. And War Games provides a custom lobby feature for conquest battles, or rift stones and boon stones. Within the War Games menu, players can create their custom lobby, selecting what stone they want to fight over, the number of teams that will fight, and the size of each team. Then players join in, and once the lobby is full, you start the match. My favorite thing is you can do private and public matches, so we think the use cases for players is going to be huge. Competitive PvP guilds can use it for practices, while less competitive guilds can do inner guild skirmishes with their friends. We're purposefully introducing war games as a feature that does not currently provide rewards. We're doing that because we want to grow the feature based on where the community naturally gravitates. With my engineering background, I'm a firm believer in iterative development and that you'll never learn more than when your customer is using your product. So please, try out the feature and share your feedback. And we'll use that input to build an engaging, fully fledged PVP mode with integrated rewards. I really, really hope they're also putting a ranked system in there. Of course, not for private matches, no, but actually for like matches where for inter-server stuff where you can sign up similar to the system, similar to the arena, really like guild versus guild stuff. And because this is something they could actually build an eSport around. And if they do, maybe that gives their MMO a really good USB. Lastly, I want to talk about Conquest battle times. I told you in my last video to please take our player survey because we really use it to guide how we evolve the game. And this is a prime example. Thank you to everyone who gave feedback on the topic of Conquest battle timing in our survey. It's clear that the large majority of our community thinks they start too early. Starting on December 5th, 
we're going to push conquest battles to start at a later time. We will share the new time as soon as it's finalized. We're going to keep listening to feedback from our community and keep iterating while we strive for continuous improvement. We spent a lot of time early. Okay. Huh. Well, we're going to have to see. For me, it was perfect because I always have to play right after work. Then I can stream a little. And then in the evening, I have to take care of my dog, um, cook something, like do all the household stuff and all of that. So we're going to see how that impacts us. So far discussing PvP due to the recent completion of our largest end game PvP event. But PvE is equally as important to us as PvP. We've got a lot for all of our players, so let's get into the rest of our topics now. Let's talk about dungeon matchmaking. Last time we talked, I mentioned that we added an incentivized random dungeon option to the matchmaking feature in order to help address queue times. And it worked. We've seen a great improvement in our queue times for matchmaking. Yeah, great improvement, but also an insane improvement of clicking the stupid accept button over and over. Why did they not make it random when they call it random? Don't get it. And we are thrilled about that. However, it's led to two situations. One, players are using this option in an unintended fashion that essentially bypasses the randomness. And two, oh. players feel that they have to make a choice between playing with friends and doing what's most efficient. The original intent of this change beyond helping queue times was to encourage more experienced players to make a choice where they could help other players and in exchange they would be eligible to receive extra rewards so both sides could be satisfied. Honestly, I don't think that ever happened and also I'm not sure if they actually wanted to do this because in a previous patch they clearly stated that you are getting supposed to be matched in the random stuff with people of your gear score. So how are you helping newer players then? That's contradicting. But that hasn't quite hit the mark yet. So there are two changes for this. The first step is that on November 21st, we made a change allowing up to four players to queue together for random dungeons. This serves two purposes. First, it will let you more easily play with your friends while still leaving space for random players to help with queue times. Second, it should allow you to have more coordination in that group of friends. And we hope that lessens the burden some of the more experienced players have felt when trying to help less experienced players complete dungeons. This, I would say, makes sense. But um, for say, like helping to complete a dungeon, you can only do if you're a tank and a healer as a team, right? And you you pull those DPS through. Um, you try to keep them alive. If you're an experienced damage dealer and you go inside a dungeon, you will help no one. If the tank is not doing, doing its job, if the healer is not doing its job, then you're just going to die as well. Then, in December, we will also add a penalty for players who do not accept the random dungeon queue or choose to leave the dungeon early. This will help ensure that the random dungeon queue serves its intended purpose of being random. I want to get... Mm -hmm. Okay, not, no, not liking it. Like, if there's a penalty, that penalty will be really hard to balance. So if you're, for example, saying it's a time limit or you're rejecting, it's one minute and then you can do it again, people will just do it. They will just continue doing it. You know what I mean? Like that the time frame there is not stopping them from getting a higher value overall. All they will do is they will go, okay, it's not happening. Well, we'll have to reject, go and QA in again, but wait one minute and meanwhile, I do some contracts. If you go and get the penalty where it actually hurts the people, like, for example, removing some of their tokens to enter the dungeons no, step by step. That, I think, like, would be nice. But here you have the issue that if someone is, like, having a disconnect or something like this, now you punish those people as well with something that hurts. So I'm curious how they're going to do it. Give you an update on our work fighting bots. We're making good progress. As bots pop up, we're beating them down. But the fight against them is never over. We'll continue to prioritize limiting the impact of bad actors within the game. And on top of that, we've taken a tough stance on RMT. Recently, we made additional changes to our approach. Okay, so regarding the bot situation, honestly, I have personally not seen bots in a while playing the game. I don't feel like it's too impactful. I am having actually more of an issue, like I'm talking about the commercial bots, no? that are only farming stuff, 
for the gold selling sites to sell you loosened and all of that. I think there's more and more private people using bots to have their characters grind 24 seven and all of that. And this is also happening in some of the major guilds as well. Of clawing back Lucent from those who RMT. In addition to sending them into negative balance and restricting them from the auction house, we also have adjusted the guild distribution system to prevent those players from receiving guild distribution while in negative balance. This change was made prior to the first castle siege. We've seen this policy be very effective so far, but we are also going to pursue RMT players further, as it's our goal to consistently maintain a fair play environment for all our players. One of Again, I think that we've also said that in the last Tico Talks, they are not addressing perfect block macros and all of that that some guilds are using. I really would like to hear their stance on that. I'm 100% sure that they are aware. Maybe they don't have a solution yet, and that's why they're not proposing anything in that regards. Um, so, yeah. Throwing in Liberty's strength is its ability to perform at large scale, and we want to embrace that. We've been working to improve and optimize all of our events since launch and have made great strides. ArcBoss Peace Mode events, however, are still not where we want them to be. Having thousands of players in such a small area is causing a burden for many of our players' ability to enjoy the event as intended. So we're going to increase the number of portals that spawn during Peace Mode for the ArcBoss events similar to how we increased the portal count for regular field bosses a few weeks back. We think this will significantly help with the performance in these events. And by the way, I think people will also enjoy more chance to get that sweet, sweet arch boss loot. We have a boatload of new content. So that means that arch boss overall will get a faster decrease in value. The PVE events will feel different. PVP will stay the same unless they're also adding portals for PvP. Then coming to end the year strong. As you heard on Eye of Silesium a few days ago, on November 21st, we released the first wave of our two-star co-op dungeons. We've mentioned before that we want to release content when it makes sense for our players. And this was one of those cases. We had originally intended to release these a little bit later, but we made the call to move them forward and release four of them right away because we saw the data showed you were ready for it. So I really hope you've been enjoying them. As Godspeed mentioned in that video, we also have Dimensional Trials releasing on December 5th. These trials will be versions of the two-star dungeons with increasingly difficult levels, leaderboards, and rewards. Oh, and by the way, you can do them infinitely and always get rewards. Leaderboards. PvE leaderboards. That sounds nice. Probably not have the funds to build my character for that. So for all my hardcore PvE friends, go have some fun. That's just part of all the new content coming December, so stay tuned to all our channels as we keep revealing more of what's coming soon. We're also committed to bringing you more quality of life improvements, and as we head into the end of this year and the beginning of next year, we're going to put a strong emphasis on improving some of the pain points and core parts of our game, particularly in combat and movement. We've received feedback that players are frustrated with some aspects of this part of the game, and we want to improve that. So look forward to the early part of next year for us to bring several impactful updates that we think will make combat and movement feel more fluid, intuitive, and natural. We're so grateful for all the participation following our release and truly believe the community is the driving factor. All of us at AGS and NCSoft are committed to servicing the game, providing great updates, and continuing our launch momentum into the years to come. This is a never-ending journey where we need to continually prove our dedication to the game and to you, our community. We remain committed to using your feedback as a driving force for our development. And to that end, during my last video, I left the community with a question. What would you like to see changed in Throne and Liberty? Well, as I promised, I read each and every comment, and we're making lots of changes because of them. So I just wanted to highlight a few of those now. But don't worry, this isn't everything. On November 21st, we introduced a Really smart, no? Like showing again that they're picking up on the feedback and you know, the whole video like it's also from a psychological standpoint um really well made like you know like it gives the people the feeling that if they're and giving some feedback something is happening i'm gonna say like there some games need to step up their game a little bit now they're doing pretty well Fine in that chat. regards i'm happy to say that additional skill and equipment presets will be added in december Thanks for your patience on this. We wanted to adjust this so that once you invest in these, they are permanently part of your character. 
we're adding an option. Did you hear that? Once you invest in these, so my guess will be it will be Lucent based, right? Maybe you can do one additional slot with Solent, so it feels like that free to play players can can do it like like instantly, right? But then afterwards it will probably be Lucent. But I personally don't care how to get it. I want more quick slots. I cannot get all of my builds there. But like also my builds are limited, but while I have free click slots, because I do not want to change my builds all the time. When we have more, I can also provide more in-depth optimizations for all the different modes in my skill sets and gear. So I really prefer if that would come fast. To automatically decline party invites from players other than those in your guild or friendly guild to help prevent griefing during PvP encounters. We expect this to be available in December. And last but not least, we are very happy to announce that we are working on adding mouse and keyboard support for our console players, and we expect that to become available in Q1 of 2025. That's interesting, because I thought they're never going to do it. But still, I would really like to see some data on how many console players there actually are. Because on the channel here, it feels like it's mostly PC players. And then like once in a while, I get a comment from a console player that is frustrated because something on console is not working as on PC. So that's my experience. So from my perspective, the ratio is like really bad. But I'm pretty sure it's not. Thank you all again so much for the constructive dialogue you've given us. Your feedback is truly our North Star. And by the way, our next survey will be available on December 12th, and you'll be able to access it directly in game. So please give us your feedback then as well. Also, well, not, well made. Like those surveys, they're actually looking at it, they're mentioning them. I have already filled it out because I think if you want to play the game, you should also give some feedback, right? Like only complaining without giving feedback is just a dick move. And yeah. If they are releasing it, it's even available in-game no? to reduce the barrier to have more people entering it. Perfectly nice marketing move here. And make sure to support it. Give them some feedback. Don't just complain, guys. And as always, of course, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I will try to answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.